Hi, this is the Tropical Tidbit for Sunday evening, May 17th. As always, the thoughts in this video are mine alone, and in making decisions, consult the National Hurricane Center and your local weather office for the best information for your location. We're looking at Tropical Storm Arthur here now with top winds of about 45 miles per hour, and on its way northeast here is behaving basically as expected. We see this uh, rather scattered convective field here with some rain bands starting to approach the North Carolina coastline. This is uh, the radar loop from Mark Nissenbaum's great site here showing some of the banding starting to come ashore in North Carolina and uh, parts of South Carolina and this will continue to bring heavy rains across this region through tomorrow afternoon. And uh, we've got Arthur slowly but surely gaining a more compact circulation. We can see on visible satellite imagery here that the low-level clouds are spinning rather tightly at the center. This is a change from yesterday where we had a very broad, calm area at the center of the cyclone. Now, this is still not very strong, and it's uh, still got a long ways to go here to become anything particularly menacing and it may not have enough time to do so. Given enough time over the warm Gulf Stream here, eventually enough of this convection uh, could precondition the atmosphere to be moist enough that we get deeper, more expansive thunderstorm coverage over the center of circulation. But for now, uh, we can actually see the circulation because there is a general lack of deep convective coverage. We also see that most of the convection remains kind of on the north side here, and this is to do with some of the light wind shear that is persisting and will actually increase between now and the time of landfall. This is the water vapor loop showing the upper level cirrus here just kind of drifting out of the southwest over top of the circulation. Very light shear for now, but there is a little bit that is going to increase as the system moves toward the outer banks due to this surge of southwesterly flow that we can see here coming out of the Gulf of Mexico as this large upper level trough over the eastern U.S. begins to progress eastward. And so this will come in and hit the storm during its closest approach to North Carolina tomorrow. That will likely keep the southern side of the storm fairly dry and probably prohibit uh, rapid intensification. But gradual intensification is likely to continue uh, through the time of closest approach to North Carolina. Max winds are currently 45 miles an hour. They could get as high as maybe 60 miles an hour. Uh, but it's really going to depend on how close it gets to the outer banks because the current forecast track is offshore. And we do expect this to avoid a direct landfall. Uh, but some of the north side wind will be a little stiff and we could get some high surf elevated water and uh, strong winds with those rain bands raking the outer banks on the north and northwest side of the system's track. You can see that already with the banding uh, on this due north side, not so much on the east side like it was yesterday, but now rotated around to this north side. And that's what we're likely to see uh, through tomorrow morning as this passes close by. And by early Tuesday morning, it will be turning away from the United States and will move harmlessly out into the open Atlantic where it is expected to weaken and become non-tropical. So really, this is just a, a nuisance storm that could cause uh, the typical kinds of flooding that you see in the Outer Banks of North Carolina in the low-lying areas. Stiff winds uh, of tropical storm force are possible. That's winds greater than 40 miles an hour. And heavy rains of a couple inches or so uh, in aggregate through tomorrow could occur in Port portions of South and North Carolina. So uh, pay heed to the National Weather Service for local details on exactly what's expected in your area. And that's it for now. Thanks for watching.